he says, regimens I will use for the benefit of the sick according to my ability and judgment. But what is used for uh, harm and injustice, I will keep away from the sick. And then he immediately goes and, says, and identifies something that could be used for harm and injustice. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I am so thankful that you are here. Did you know you're beautiful? Anyways, I hope you do. Okay, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to a conference called Physicians for Life conference here in Ottawa, and I had the privilege of meeting wonderful physicians. And I also met one of the speakers who is a philosophy professor at the University of San Francisco. He wrote a book and he talked a little bit about it in the conference. Um, he talked about it in the interview. I'll give the book a plug at the end. Um, so he talked about a little bit about the Hippocratic Oath and also the origin story of how we got the medical symbol. I think it is fascinating, something that you don't necessarily know, but you, you once you start thinking about it, you're like, yeah, how did that happen? So I think by the end of the interview, you will have learned something that you will never forget. Um, if you do, make sure to comment down below just one thing that you learned. And I'll remind you at the end of the interview. Um, I hope you enjoy the interview and I will see you at the end of the video. I'll mention, I'll show you his book and uh, yeah, see you later. Hey everybody, I'm here with Dr. Kavanaugh. He's a philosophy professor at the University of San Francisco. And this weekend at the Conference of uh, Physicians for Life, he gave a talk about the Hippocratic Oath and some of the, the history of it. And he's graciously agreed to talk a little bit more, maybe give you a, a summarized version of his talk. And so I hope you enjoy this. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so my talk, uh, was on the the Hippocratic Oath and the profession of medicine, and um, the 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 notion, the intuitive sense we have of medicine as a profession, as involving a promise. So, if we look at the the word profession, uh, it's a Latin word, and it it, it has a, a, a prefix pro, which means in front of or before. And fashion, which comes from the Latin verb to speak. So uh, if we look at the origins of that word in classical Latin in Rome, um, we'll see it, it was originally, it was when one stood in front of the authorities and told them what one stood for, uh, what one was, what one practiced, what one did, uh, um, what activity one was involved in. And eventually it developed, it, it acquired, um, an ethical component, a practice that involved an ethical commitment. And one of the first uses of the word profession to incorporate the notion that it involves an ethical commitment was with reference to medicine. And uh, part of that is, is the legacy of, of the physician whom we call Hippocrates. As I, me as I mentioned, I have a book on the Hippocratic Oath, um, Hippoc uh, Hippocrates' Oath and Asclepius' Snake, The Birth of the Medical Profession. And in there, as I note, um, we have to be a little cautious attributing the oath to Hippocrates, who was a historical person who lived around 470 BC approximately. Roughly, he was a contemporary of the Athenian philosopher Socrates. Um, and he lived in, he was from Kos, the island of Kos, one of the Dodecanese islands off the southeastern coast of present day Turkey. Um, but we have to be a little cautious in attributing it to him because we don't know if he wrote it for sure, um, nor are we confident of really anything that he did write, but we do know that he had a school of medicine. Uh, so I just note that to be accurate. Um, but the oath, uh, it transforms whoever wrote it it transforms medicine from something that we could conceive of merely as a technique which could be oriented towards diverse ends even goals that are opposed to each other and contradictory such as oriented towards health as using this technique to produce health but also using the technique to produce sickness um, the oath orients medicine exclusively towards health 
towards therapy, towards caring. And uh, we can see that in the oath uh, where the portion of the oath where the, the person who takes the oath, the juror, s swears to, uh, you, he says, regimens I will use for the benefit of the sick according to my ability and judgment. But what is used for uh, harm and injustice, I will keep away from the sick. And then he immediately goes and, says, and identifies something that could be used for harm and injustice. Namely, he says, uh, I will not give a deadly drug, even if I am asked, nor will I suggest this course of action, this plan. Um, so clearly, the, the author of the oath and those who take the oath are conceiving of medicine as a profession, as a practice that involves a technique that can be oriented towards many goals, but which they have chosen, they have chosen to orient exclusively towards health, towards therapy, towards caring, and they've gone out of their way to exclude particularly killing, and then they go on to speak of abortion, as well as uh, sexual predation and gossiping as particular wounds that they will not become involved in inflicting. And so um, our sense of medicine as a profession, as involving promising, can be traced back uh, to this figure, Hippocrates, and to the oath that we call the Hippocratic Oath. Thank you for sharing that. Um, maybe one other thing I'll ask you to kind of briefly summarize um, is I, I just found it interesting how you pointed out the the different like possible histories of how the symbol of me medicine came to be mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. there is uh, symbols or the history from Achilles. I forget the middle one. Asclepius. Asclepi Asclepius. Asclepius. And then from the uh the hebrew oh, history right, right yes could you just just so everybody kind of sure. is aware of it yes. it's a kind of a fun yes. fun thing to, yes. to think about okay uh, the of how we came up with or how we have the medical symbol we have now yes yeah so thank you so yeah so the medical symbol with which you're familiar many are familiar is one snake wrapped around a staff or a walking staff and that is the staff of Asclepius. And to this day, that is the symbol of medicine. I, I should mention, it's not, the, um, it's not the caduceus. It's not two snakes. It's one snake. Uh, it's kind of a lear if your, your audience can take that away, they know that the, the symbol of medicine is the staff of Asclepius is one snake wrapped around a, a walking staff. And the other symbol, which has two snakes, is really the... The, called the caduceus, which is the um, the staff of Hermes or Mercury, who is the messenger of the god. And because publishers uh, use that in in uh, in the United States in particular for medical textbooks, people mistook it for the symbol of medicine, uh, and it's not the symbol of medicine, but it's often confused with right. the accurate symbol of medicine. But the symbol of medicine, we can trace that to Asclepius, and uh, the staff, the the ancient. Uh, demigod of medicine for the Greeks um, and the staff uh, the st staff part of the symbol is a walking stiff stick and the uh, ancient Greek physicians were in their language epidemiological we um, that we use that word to mean the spread of diseases but the ancient Greeks epi meant around and uh, damia meant around the villages and uh, and so the ancient Greek physician went from one village to another and, uh, and saw patients and so would have a walking, a hiking stick with which he would go from one village to another. So that's where we get the stick. The, the snake is a little more difficult to figure out precisely. There are numerous reasons that medical historians offer. Um, a, one is that, that snakes shed their skins and that uh, that's kind of a remarkable phenomenon that they that they shed their skins. Uh, so the snakes shed their skins, and if you've seen a, 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 a shed snake skin, it's very more remarkable because it happens in one fell swoop. It's like an inverted sock. So this would give them the the um, the uh, associate with that activity that uh, ectasis 
it's called that phenomenon of, of molting, um, is the idea maybe they could heal themselves. So they're kind of a, have a knowledge of self-healing. So perhaps that was a source of them being a symbol of medicine. Uh, in addition, there, there are more than one reason, but another reason is they're, the Greeks uh, have a word called chthonic. They're of the earth. They're in the earth. They're on the ground. So they have a, a knowledge of the earth and its healing properties. So perhaps that would be a source of their being a, a symbol of medicine. They have wisdom. Also, they... Um, they uh, in, in the ancient Greek culture and in also in the Hebrew culture, there's a, um, <clears throat> well, excuse me, in the ancient, excuse me, in the Arabian Peninsula, there was a disorder called Dracunculus medinensis. It's, an, it's a guinea worm disease, right. and it's uh, indigenous around the town of Medina in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, it was a parasite. It's currently there now as well. And if you drink infected water, it can uh, hatch in one's digestive system. And then the worm wends its way down to one's extremities, one's legs, and then it egg tries to exit. Um, and the way that ancient uh, caregivers removed the worm was to get it to wrap itself around a slender little stick. And even to this day, people lacking modern healthcare have that method in that area of, of wrapping the guinea worm around a little stick. So medical historians wonder, well, perhaps, perhaps caregivers advertise themselves by having a little a, a stick with a worm wrapped around it, and then that eventually got involved with a snake. Okay, so that's one possibility as well. Um, but what I try to develop in, in the book is the notion that the snake precisely as a wounder is an apt symbol of medicine because the ancient Greeks had an aphorism that the wounder heals, the wounder heals. And they, this aphorism was found in one of their great Greek tragedies, the tragedy of Telephus. Telephus was wounded by Achilles when Achilles went to, um, Achilles went to attack Troy and um, he mistook Troy. He mistook Telephus' city as Troy, and he attacked uh, Telephus' city. Telephus was able to repel Achilles, but he was wounded by Achilles, and his wound would not heal. So he went to the Delphic Oracle, the uh, Oracle of Apollo and Delphi, the temple there, and the, asked the priestess, how would he be healed? And she said, the wounder heals. The wounder heals, and that enters into Greek culture as an aphorism, one of their wise insights into, into reality. So Telephus goes to Achilles, and Achilles heals him by scraping filings from his spear into his abdomen. And in light of this, I would suggest that the snake, as a wounder, is an apt symbol of healing because the wounder heals this ancient insight, which we find also in the uh, Hebrew Hebrew scriptures. In the in the book of Numbers, we find uh, the story of these fiery serpents biting the Hebrews, uh, and they complain to Moses, and Moses goes to Yahweh and asks, well, how will they be healed? And Yahweh says, you have to fashion a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, everyone who looks at it, will be healed. And, uh, and that, uh, that is what comes about in the Hebrew scriptures and numbers tells that story of the snake actually being a cause of not only a symbol, but actually a cause of healing in the Hebrew uh, scriptures. And then in the Christian, in the New Testament, in John's gospel, Jesus says, unless I am lifted, unless the son of man is lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, um, other people, I must be lifted up in order for others to be healed. So he compares himself to the snake in, in, the, in the book of Numbers that was lifted up and then people looked at it and were healed. So there in, in that culture, the Hebrew scriptures and the following Christian tr uh, tradition, we find again the snake as a symbol and even a cause of healing. So you have it in the Greeks, in the, in the Hebrew, uh, and then subsequently in the Christian. So the, that is, um, I think, partially, that could be one further reason why the snake, although it's paradoxical that the wounder 
would be a symbol of healing. Insofar as the wounder heals, uh, it makes sense that it would be a symbol of healing. Uh, that's also associated with the phenomenon of homeopathy, the notion that uh, like cures like. So we find that there are substances like, say, vaccinations or inoculations um, that, uh, that in, if given to a healthy person, they can confer um, some pr prevention against contraction of disease. Um, and and um, so that's that I think those are some of the reasons for associating the snake with a symbol of medicine. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you, you sharing that. And what I really appreciate is like how clear you are. Um, even yesterday and even now, I, I notice that you really know the material. Um, you're pretty clear and concise in your explanations. And I find that makes it so much easier to understand and kind of uh, keep up with what you're saying. Um, and I find that a very unique skill, a unique gift of, of a speaker. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate the time you took to kind of share this so um, I can learn and so everybody else can learn. I'm Good. sure they're going to appreciate it. Um, you have a book. Yes. Can people buy it online? It's available at Amazon. It's available mm -hmm. online. It's from Oxford University Press. It's called Hippocrates. Yeah. It's called Hippocrates Oath and Asclepius' Snake, The Birth of the Medical Profession. Okay, so you have a book and it's on Amazon. I'm yes. going to link it down below. That way, if you guys are interested in learning more, you can go and access. Have, you have access to his book. Um, but other than that, maybe what's one way that people can learn more about you and what you do or reach out to you if uh, they want to? Well, I'm a, professor of philosophy, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professor of philosophy at the University of San Francisco in San Francisco, California. And uh, I'm, I'm on the Internet. Sounds good. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thank you again. Uh, make sure to, how about this, to make sure something sticks and make sure that you learned it. Comment down below one, one unique piece of information <laughs> that you guys uh, took out of this, this conversation. So, what did you think? Did you like the interview? Did you learn something? Did you comment something down below so that you'll remember it? I hope you did. Um, this is the book right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I will put the link to the book to Dr. Kavanaugh's website in the description. It is about the Hippocratic Oath in Escapely Snake, the birth of the medical profession. He was so kind enough that he even uh, signed it. Can you see that? It says to Chiago in admiration of your devotion to life. I really appreciate it. Dr. Kavanaugh, if you're watching, thank you so much. I hope people learn uh, about it, just the interview and by your books. Um, I'm definitely gonna read this throughout the year. So description is down below. If you enjoyed that interview, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with any of your friends that you know like history, that are interested in medicine, or you think would just benefit from knowing how the medical symbol came to be. These are interesting things, and I hope to interview more uh, physicians, more people, involved in the medical field, such as Dr. Kavanaugh, who is a philosopher, uh, to shed light on some of these interesting aspects that we don't really think about on a daily basis. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing your beautiful faces in the next video.